for most of us, before we become parents, we already have a pretty good idea of how we want to show up as a parent. So whether we will be going at it the same way that our parents did or go doing something completely different, we have a good idea of the parental style that we want to use. But what happens if your child doesn't respond well to the parenting style that you had in mind. <laughs> this is what we're gonna talk about today. For those who don't know me, my name is Danielle C. Baker. I am the founder and CEO of Being Connected. I'm also a registered early childhood educator with over 20 years of experience in the field. I do help parents and educators navigate the realities of uh, what it is to raise a child and, and help them throughout their development. But uh, don't get it wrong, when you're working with me, we're putting the child's needs first. So you're going to have to put the ego and the pride aside. And let's get to it. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. And before we get started, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you are listening or watching from. And of course, with season two, this episode is brought to you by the Self-Esteem doc, uh, Doctor Online Academy, with the amazing Dr. Simone Alicia. There's a wealth of resources there to help your child with self-esteem, confidence, and so much more. So I will add the link to the description and the comments for you to have a look at it. It is absolutely amazing. I love the work that they do. And so we're going to jump right in. I decided to call this episode the parenting palette, because it's really something that I, as I'm working with parents, um, kind of started picturing, visualizing. I'm a very visual person. And when we were talking about parenting styles, we are often just stuck on that one. Uh, there's a good one, there's a bad one, there's a so-so one, and we're not too sure how to take it. And we, we believe that when we're opting for a specific parenting style that that's the one that we have to stick to and it's a, it's a lot more complex than that we have to understand that there is no cookie cutter way of doing things when it comes to raising children and that every child is different every child will respond to parenting styles differently or even the same child will respond differently as they grow older as they develop more skills so it's not just a one parenting style type of approach that we, we need to take. And this is why I, I kind of came up with this parenting palette, because if you look at the difference between a, a painting that where the artist created, they mix their own colors to create the, the perfect colors, the perfect hues, um, and that versus a paint by number painting, where this, you can't go between the lines, you have the actual color and there's no depth to it. There's no dimension to it. There's no life to it, really. It's just two dimensional. And this is what happens with parenting styles. You're gonna have to kind of be, get creative and mix and match and find the balance between the parenting styles so that you show up better for your child and that you're, you're preparing your child for what life will actually be for them and that leads me right into what your role as a parent is before I start introducing the parenting styles and what to do with that and what to look forward to uh one of the the main jobs that you have as a parent is to prepare your children for adulthood you're there to support them throughout their development from infancy to adulthood that's what a parent is that's what a parent does right so this means that you're going to have to set appropriate limits with your child so that you can teach them how to set boundaries for when they're older. Uh, you're going to have to watch your child fail. The only way that they can learn life lessons, the only way that they can develop the skills for decision making, for critical thinking, to think for themselves, uh, to get creative, to become their own person, they are unfortunately going to have to go through trials and errors. And you're going to have to let that happen because if you stop that, and you do things for them in, in the quest for protecting them and giving them an easier life, you're actually creating challenges for them later on because they're they will not be ready for what life is going to throw at them. So you have to set those limits. You have to kind of let them try and fail sometimes, just be there to support them afterwards. And you're going to have to let them learn that or feel the consequences of their actions. That is also a learning process. If you are always behind them, cleaning up after them, covering up for them, bailing them out, they're not gonna know 
what it's like the consequences of their actions are and the impact that has on others, not just themselves, but others. So that's part of your role as a parent is to make sure that you've got, you're creating, you are raising a well-balanced, healthy human being that is ready for everything that comes. The children will eventually tell you that they don't like you, that they're going to be mad at you for setting these boundaries and, and letting them fail, but learn from them or suffer the consequences uh, from their decisions. But that's basically your role as a parent. And there's a social worker named Hannah Mulhaville. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing her name properly. I apologize for that. But she says that, you know, a parent is the best person in the world for a child to be mad at or not to like. Because the, the parent is the one person that is not going to desert them. They're still going to love them, even if they're mad at them, that they're going to yell and shout at them saying that they don't like them I hate you all of that you're still gonna love them that's what unconditional love is for your child so you, the parent is the best person in the world for a child to not like and be mad at for a little bit uh, because you're there for them they're, they're not going to be judged uh, well you might judge them a little bit but on the side you're still going to show up for them and they need that they need that confidence they need that as um a reassurance that you have their back no matter what as they're learning you know it's different when they're older but as they're learning the process there's going to be some friction once in a while so just remember that in in terms of parenting you are supporting your child while they're making mistakes right you cannot do it for them they will not learn if you do everything for them if you make it easier on them uh, it doesn't mean that you have to let them suffer. I'm just saying that sometimes they're just going to mess up and that's okay. You're just there to pick them up and, and show them that it's okay to mess up sometimes. We mess up sometimes. So we need to prepare them for that. Um, we need to encourage them to take on age-appropriate responsibilities. We uh, tend to baby our children quite a lot. They, they're so they're capable of so much more than what we think they are. And... Um, that also kind of creates issues later on because we think they're too young. So I actually have a list of age appropriate chores. Chores at home are a very important part of a child's development. It's not exploitation. Uh, it's not abuse. It's, it's really, it, these are the ways to help children uh, learn just general life coping skills, like things that they're going to have to do on their own, but also to build that confidence to, to start uh, developing skills that they need later on. So uh, I will leave a link below or in the descriptions with a, it's, it's a list of age appropriate uh, chores from the age of two when they're toddlers right up until high school. And you will be surprised at how much they can do when it's really, it's, it's really kind of uh, eye opening <laughs> to do. So have a look at that as well and get them to work. Again, don't exploit them, but uh, get them to work. Start, and don't forget that you're going to have to show them how to do it. Don't expect them to know how to do it. They, they won't know at first, so you're going to have to be there with them and show them and encourage them until they can do it by themselves and, and build their confidence. So, you know, take on age-appropriate uh, responsibilities that you're going to have to teach them how to think for themselves. So as they're learning, instead of just giving them the answers right away or, or uh you know, giving them, every, doing everything for them to ask them, what do you think we should do? What do you think will happen if we do this? What do you think will happen if we do that? Which one of those two is the best scenario for us right now? You're getting that muscle working of critical thinking, thinking for yourself and making decisions accordingly. And uh, you're going to have to let them solve their own problems. Um, again, I'm not saying that we have to let them suffer but there's sometimes that you are going to have to step in. But uh, again, sometimes you're going to have to let them solve their own problems and just be there to support them. If you're doing everything for them, if you're not letting them struggle a little bit to figure it out on their own. When I say struggle, I don't mean suffer. OK, so we have to make that uh, clear. Uh, if they're having a hard time tying their shoelaces, they need to learn the only way they're going to learn is by doing it if you keep doing it for them they're not actually going to know what they're capable of if you're constantly 
uh, doing things for them and not give them a chance to to work it through. They may actually find a solution that's way more creative than you would have thought of, and, and now they're making your life easier. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so I'm going to go right in with the different parenting styles. Like I said, there's not a, a perfect parenting style. Uh, it depends on your situation. It depends on how you are in that moment, and it depends on where your child is in that moment as well. I'm going to describe the four main ones and kind of dissect them a little bit. So there is the authoritarian parenting style, there's the authoritative parenting style, there's the permissive parenting style, and then there's the neglectful parenting style. So what you have to understand it is absolutely natural, it's kind of like personality traits. There's not just the one. So you may use different parenting styles depending on your situation. So of course, if it's for safety reason, your child's life is in danger, you you, you might automatically jump into the authoritarian uh, mode, where it's just like, this is it, it's strict, it's, it's a no, it's a hard no, no matter what, we're not negotiating this. Uh, you may become a little bit more permissive as your child grows older and shows that they're capable of doing things that they're own, on their own, that, that they're getting more responsible, um, that, that you could trust them. You could be, uh, as they grow older, you could, you know, change the curfew and things like that. So they are more on the permissive. So this is where your palette, your parenting palette is. You start mixing your colors to, to get the right combination for your child. And it's going to be different from one child to the other. So if you have more than one child, you probably mentioned that in the comments, uh, what worked for one is not going to work for the other. So that's why you need to find that balance and be flexible. Um, we have to recognize our own limits as well. So there are things that uh, we have issues with as well. So we have to take that into consideration. It's going gonna, it's gonna to show up in our parenting styles. And, and just remember that we're doing the best that we can, no matter how much we are struggling. Uh, we, our intentions are always the best when it comes to our children. Right. So there's not one parent out there, no matter the situation, that is going to wake up and say, how can I hurt my child today? That, that is never the intention. So we're doing the best that we can with what we have at that moment or how we can process things at that moment. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, so we're going to jump right in with the we're going to start with the authoritative uh, parenting style. That's that's often considered the ideal so-called ideal style uh, because it's there's a combination of, of warmth and nurturing. Um, but you're still making it clear that you're the parent. There is a line that you don't cross. So yes, we can talk about things. I'll take your opinions into consideration. But at the end of the day, I'm the one who's making the decision, not you, if you're speaking to your child, right? So uh, that's what the authoritative uh, parenting style kind of looks like. Uh, children in that situation will know what to expect and they'll they know that there are consequences if they cross that line so uh, it kind of helps the child understand what their role is and what to expect so uh, they understand very well what's going to happen and what is expected of them uh, parents will explain the reason why the rules are in place so will say, okay, this is how it is because of this. They will explain. So the child is not just left not knowing why and just have to execute because the parents said so. There's a reason behind it. So it helps them to start thinking and uh, it's, it helps them when it's time to making decisions to say, okay, wait a minute, this is the reason why. So, okay, that makes sense to me. So it's easier for them to follow the rules after that. Uh, the parents will explain um, and they will also listen to the children's opinions right they, if the the child wants to protest <laughs> against the rule or what is expected of them the parents will sit down and listen to their side but at the end of the day there's it's the parent that's still the decision maker we'll see if that's what we go for we may change some things but if that doesn't work you know um, it is what it is uh, so that's pretty much what is involved in the authority authority Tative, uh parenting style. Again, uh, English is my second language. Just some words that I struggle with. This is one of them. Uh, so an example of that would be like at mealtime. You know, uh, the, the parents are going to model what they expect of the children when they're eating. So, you know, sitting, uh, no screen time, no, no devices on the table, uh, how we're going to eat, you know, um, it will get them involved in 
preparing the meals, like meal preps, uh, again, age appropriately. They may even allow the child to choose a meal for the week. So one, once a week, uh, they get to choose, make the menu for everybody. So it's going to help build their confidence. They're going to, you're creating responsible children. They understand that their decisions affects everybody. There's some consequences to everybody. There's an impact. So they they become more responsible. Uh, they, they, they build their confidence because now they know that uh, you believe that they can do it and and they can see that they can do it. You're pushing the limit a little bit to show them that you got this, you got this, I trust you. So you're building that and they're capable of making decisions by themselves a lot sooner. That's basically one of the reasons why a lot of people will believe that it's, it's the most ideal parenting style. We're going to jump into the permissive parenting style now. Um, this is where parents kind of pride themselves to be their children's besties, right? So uh, they're very warm, they're very nurturing, they're, they, there's that open communication, they're actively involved in their children's well-being. They talk about everything in this. Sometimes this is where lines are crossed a little bit because they may have some conversations that shouldn't be happening between a child and an adult. No, no depending on what that means to you. Uh, but the child will just feel comfortable speaking to their parents about everything. So that's why that parent will be more attuned with uh, their child's mental uh, situation, their well-being, how they are uh, right now. So there's that that comes to it. Um, there's there are low expectations of very little consequences in that parenting style. So the child is kind of free to make their own decisions. Uh, but the one thing that, and, and being free to make their own decisions will help with self-esteem. Like this, this is where the children are, are, you know, they, they know they can make the right decisions. But what happens in these situations is a lot of the times the parents, um, will take control of the child's environment. They will control the child's environment so that their children will not have to experience failures or rejection. So they're very controlling of who's around their children, what situations are happening, and um, what their children will be exposed to in terms of, of negative, uh, on the negative side. So the children uh, in this situation when they're taken outside of that family environment where everything is controlled in the way that they can't do anything wrong and that they're the best at everything. Uh, when they're taken out of that environment, they, they can tend to have more impulsive behaviors. Uh, they can be more demanding and they can lack some, um, some abilities to self-regulate because right up until they're taken out of that environment, for example, going into daycare, or going into school, now um, they're gonna have to wait their turn, which is something that they never had to do before. Uh, what they thought they were king at everything or you know, princesses and prince at everything, now they realize that there are kids around there that are better at them and certain at what they thought they were the best at. Uh, so there's some attacks to their self-esteem there and they won't know how to process that. They were gonna have to share, they can't, they're gonna have to wait their turns. And there's sometimes the majority of the class will not want to do what they want to do, and then they won't know how to process that either. So there's some some situations there. Uh, the other thing that can happen too with the permissive parenting style is that the parents will tend to bail their kids out of everything. If the child did something wrong, they will come to the rescue and come up with great reasons and excuses why their child behaved that way and, and try to get them out of it. So you're creating children who do not um, they deal with the consequences of their actions. They don't see the impact that they have on others. So that's what happens with the permissive parenting style. We have the authoritarian parenting style as well as the third one, where it's really strict rules, high standards, some, some hardcore punishments uh, to regulate the child's behavior. So I always think of that one as I my mom was in the army. So that's military style. It's just, this is how it is. This is what you're expected and you can't, you know, that's what you have to do. Uh, so the, this, the expectations are very high and they're not flexible. So it's all or nothing. Your report card has got to be all A's or A plus. If you got one B plus somewhere, you're suffering. You're, you're, you're going to suffer the consequences. Uh, you're, okay, the child may not know sometimes that 
what the rules are until they actually break that rule. So that when I say it's very rigid, very strict, it's, and there's no communication, it is what it is, that it's because I said so and I'm the adult. Uh, sometimes a child will do something that they didn't even know was a rule, that they broke a rule, and now they're suffering the consequences. Uh, but there's no explanation to it, so they still don't know really what's going on. So that's what happens with the the authoritarian uh, parenting style. It, it, what happens in this case is that children will be really good at following instructions because they know they don't want to have to deal with what happens if you don't follow instructions. They're also very well, so-called well-behaved in public because, again, uh, they know that they um, they will pay for it later if they don't behave properly. But that can create a lot of fear and anxiety and nervousness because they're afraid that at any corner they could be doing something that they're not even aware of that could upset somebody. Uh, there's a lack of experience in decision making as well because the rules are so strict uh, and there's no room for communication about them. They're used to having decisions made for them. Uh, they never actually had to make decisions. So when it's time for them to make a decision, they don't know how to process that. And uh, it could be uh, also harder for them to to make those decisions later on in life. And, and also those are the kind of children as well. I'm not general, I'm kind of generalizing, but some most of the time when as they go into their teenage years, that's where they're aggressively rebellious because they were so strict that now that they have a little bit more freedom, they're just gonna do everything that they were never allowed to do before, just as a, as a, as a rebellious act. Uh, they could also lack some low, some social skills as well because it was so rigid that they, they've never learned flexibility. They never learned that for somebody else's needs, they may need to adjust because they've never experienced that in their life. The last one, the fourth one is the ne neglectful parenting style, where now the parent is only taking on the role of fulfilling the basic needs of the child. So whatever the law requires, we gotta feed you, clothe you, put a roof over your shoulder, uh, over your head. And uh, pay very little attention to the child. This is where the neglectful uh, parenting style is. There's not a lot of nurturing, not a lot of warmth. There's low expectations. Uh, there's no limits there. The child is left to fend for themselves. So uh, I want to make a, a really clear note here from my experience of what I've seen in families and then what I've experienced personally as well is we tend to judge the neglectful per parenting style quite a bit as um, a bad parent. You have to realize that in some situations, the, going towards the neglectful parenting style is not by choice. So it's not the parent's choice, it's just the circumstances. So I'll give you an example before you start judging me. A single parent that has to work overtime so that they can put food on the table and a roof over their children's heads. Uh, so they're not home Often they're not there to spend time with their children. They're not there to support them in their growth and, and making decisions and caring for them. So this is what I mean by it's not a choice. It's out of survival. We have to do this. This is what we have to do. A lot of the times if there are more than one child, the older siblings usually care for the younger siblings and they're the ones who take the parenting role. But uh, just, just to make it clear that not everybody has a great situation or a great support system where they can take on the parenting style that they wish they could. They could just provide the bare minimum for their children at the moment. And that's what all they can do. They still care for their children. They still they, they beat themselves up for not being there for their children. Um, but that's that's what it is right now at that moment. That the best that they can do. So there's um, the children in that situation are, are quite often very resilient uh, and they're also very self-sufficient just out of necessity out of survival they had no choice they had to develop those skills by themselves for pure survival um, they may have trouble controlling their emotions because they haven't had anybody to kind of model uh, what a healthy uh, processing a healthy emo emotions in a healthy way is uh, and the coping strategies are not really there either because they don't have anybody to model. They just kind of, they're in survival mode, so they're very reactive because that's the part of the brain that's working at that point. Uh, they could have some difficulties with social relationships because uh, a lot of the times when you're in a neglectful parenting style, you don't talk about what's happening at home. Uh, you keep to yourself, you keep within the family. Um, 
and that's that's what it is. So social interactions, you could be a little ashamed of what's happening, so you don't interact with others as much. Uh, you seek out as they grow older, they often seek out inappropriate role models. So because they're not getting the attention um, from their parents, they're going to seek it elsewhere. And it's a lot easier to seek negative attention than it is to seek positive attention. So they'll often seek out negative role models later on. As they as they get older, uh, that's just it's so funny. It's throughout this episode, there's this French expression that we say "grosso modo," um, "grosso modo," which just means like that's the bigger picture. Like all in all, this is what it is. "Grosso modo," uh, that's what those four parenting styles are. You have to to realize that there really is no parenting style that guarantees to produce perfect children. You know, there's no parenting style that proves that that's the best way to get them, um, outstanding adults later on. And then one uh, example that can prove that is you can have a family with two or three children, the same parenting style, but the children, uh, when they become adults, are completely different lifestyles. They have different outcomes. Right. Some of them are doing well. Some of them are not doing so well. So well, and some of them have completely disappeared. We don't know where they are. So this is the reason why I say there's there's no perfect parenting style. It depends on your child. You need to work those colors together. You mix mix in your own colors to create something that'll work for your children. Um, so just as you're kind of testing out the different parenting styles to see what you need to adjust for your child or for your different children, uh, you need to make sure, again, that you teach them to learn from their mistakes. So if they made a mistake, it's okay. All right, you got into a fight at school, it happens. Okay, let's work on this. What could we do to prevent that next time instead of just, you know, going down on them and embarrassing them and belittling them. Um, another example of learning from their mistakes is if they know they have uh, paper due in the morning, but they stayed up all night playing video games. Uh, well, there's going to be consequences to that. Learn from your mistake. Dealing with the consequences at school the next day is going to teach them how to manage their time more efficiently, you know, and, and allow sometimes for some schoolwork. Um, you're going to have to teach them to deal with the consequences. So again, if they haven't done their homework, they played video games all night, uh, there's a consequence to that. There's going to be low grades. We put a lot of importance and emphasis on good grades. So pa parents panic when their kids do not perform academically. Uh, but having them live through the consequences of having a low grade or having to uh, go into detention, it's a, it's a good lesson to learn, right? Instead of bailing them out, I've seen parents who will say, okay, well, that's okay. We'll just call the school and say you're sick tomorrow so you can do the homework tomorrow. So they're, what are they learning? They're learning that they're going to stay at home all day playing video games all day and not doing the work still. So just remember, you need to teach them to deal with the consequences. You're there to support them. Of course, you don't want to put their lives at risk. I mean, sometimes you do have to step in, but to just keep that in mind. Um your job as a parent is to give your children the tools that they need to go through their difficulties. So it's not to control the situation, it's to give them the tools and resources. So again, you don't want them to suffer or struggle uh, excessively, but you work through them. You be kind of become a mentor, right? A, a voice or reason. Uh, you will adjust your parenting style as needed. Not all of the children are the same and they won't respond to the parenting style the same. So you may actually cause more friction if you're rigid on your parenting style, but it's not working for your child. That's not what they need. Um, some children do need to be more structured and uh, very clear rules. So the authoritarian uh, style can be very helpful for the, those children who need that stability. They, they need to feel that control. And there's some students that some that have uh, even personality disorders who can who go against authority, then you, that's not the the style you're going to want to adopt with them, right? Um, so you really do need to find that balance, and that's going to be a little bit of trial and error for you as well. So that's why keeping that com communication open with your child is also very good. Uh, you're going to have to set the right limits, right? Uh, what you want to do when you want to set the right limits is you allow them to roam free a little bit, 
to discover their world and to figure out their their stuff. But the the, the that freedom is limited. So I uh, picture it more like uh, if you had sheep, right? You have a fence to tell the sheep that you're not going past that. But what you do inside the pasture is up to you. They can choose which flowers to eat. They can choose where to run to as long as it's within that perimeter. So it's kind of the same with your children. You're going to set some invisible per perimeters with your limitations and you let them roam free in that environment, still watching them to make sure that they're not getting hurt. Um, you get you can, as they get older, you can also get them involved in some of the rules and say, okay, well, you're a little older now. We think that you know you could go out alone with your friends and and kind of figure out those limitations together. They really appreciate that and they'll understand where you're coming from. It also helps to keep them accountable later on and say, hey, you helped with this. This was your suggestion. Now deal with it or let's rework it. So it's a lot of problem solving skills involved there as well. Um, I'm going to, before I end it, I just want to talk about co-parenting because that is very difficult. It can be very difficult. We're not taught growing up that before you even start a family, this is a discussion that you should have with your partner uh, of what your parenting style is, what you think your parenting style is and what their parenting styles are and, and figure out where your values are with that. What are your non-negotiables and how can you work that? How can you work at raising an amazing human being, whether you're, you stay together the entire time or, you know, how are you going to handle it if you do split up? It's not calling a, a failure in your, your partnership. But it, let's be real, more than half of the time, more than half of the couples end up separating. Yeah, so let's make this, let's have this conversation before we start having babies. What is that going to look like for us if we do separate? What is going to look for us if we stay together forever? Um, so uh, so that way you're ready if it does happen when you're co-parenting. The one thing I'm going to leave you with that as parents, whether you are together, whether you are with the other parent or you are not, if one of the parents breaks the, the boundaries or breaks the limitations, don't ever, ever confront them in front of the children. When you're in front of the children, you 100% have their back, whether you're together or not. You will have a discussion later when the children are not there. But when the kids are there and one of the parents breaks the rule or disrespects the, the guidelines, um, you stay neutral, you have 100%. They, they impose a rule that you don't agree with. You're okay with it when you're in front of the kids, but you will talk about it later on and come back to it. Not easy, but it is important to have that, to show the children that, that first of all, not to give them ammunition to play one against the other, but to give them that sense of stability as well. Um, before I go, I just want to kind of leave you. I thought that was kind of interesting as, as the years go by. And now there's some of the kids that I used to work with. I'm not working with their kids. So that's a whole concept that I have to deal with. But it's kind of cool to see the progression in, in your relationship with once your children are grown. So the different parenting styles will affect your relationship with your children when they're adults, which is kind of interesting as well. So uh, again, I'm generalizing. It doesn't mean that it's always like this, but usually uh, when you opt for the authoritarian parenting style, a very strict, rigid, you know, um, military style, usually the children are not very close to their parents in the end. It was so strict that they just kind of, there was no time for nurturing, no warmth, no affection as much. Uh, so they, they didn't create that bond early on. So as they grow older, they're just kind of, you know, they'll call each other for holidays and birthdays and things like that and talk about little, little events, but that's it. You know, they're not going out of their way to spend time together. With the permissive parenting style, oftentimes what you see is the children come back for their parents to uh, bail them out, to, to help them out with something, to fix their problems. Uh, so this is the kind of dynamic where you will see um, children moving back in to the parents' house after, uh, you know, the uh, finance, financial issues, a breakup with their partner, uh, or just they're in trouble all the time and the parents have to bail them out somehow. With the authoritative uh, per, uh, parenting style, uh, 
the, what happens often is the children do have a good relationship with the parents. They will come to their parents for advice, but they will not expect them to fix their problems. So the parents become mentors. They, they really appreciate uh, their parents' opinion. And if they're struggling with something, they may come and see them and say, okay, what do you think about this? The parents will say what they think. And then the, the child, well, the grown adult now, will kind of process that and choose whatever is the best option for their situation. So they may not go with what the parents are saying, but at least they got some kind of wisdom from it. Uh, with a neglectful parenting style, that can vary a little bit. What I've noticed is you can have, because there was no attachment or um, what will happen often is the children will either care for the parents, like they were, like the parent was their child. They're kind of, treating their parents the way that they wish their parents would have taken care of them when they were younger. So they may feel sorry, they may feel bad for their parent who's still struggling and care for them, or they will completely pull away and not want to have to do anything with their parent as well. So there's this kind of both ends there. Uh, but again, I'm generalizing, it's not always that way, but this is what you kind of see. So just to leave you with words of wisdom is that the best, best scenario for you to know that your parenting styles and your palate, your parenting palate uh, has worked at its best is the best case scenario. Your children will come to you for advice, but they won't expect you to fix their problems. That um, they've surpassed you in life achievements. You know, they've gone a little step further from, from yours. This is how you know that uh, as a parent, you really did show up for your, your kids and you did the best that you could and that you're getting the results um, that you wanted. So just keep that in mind. You wanna create some amazing human beings, some amazing adults that will be balanced, uh, that they can problem solve, that they are confident with their uh, abilities and skills to take on the world and whatever life is throwing at them. So I'm gonna leave you with that. If you have any questions, if you'd like some more information for your particular situation, you can contact me. I could do a Q&A, could do a live on social media just to go over some things as well. Don't forget to have a look at the Self-Esteem Doctor Online Academy as well. There's some great resources there to help you uh, navigate through all of this with your parenting styles. And uh, so I'll leave you with that. Until then, stay safe, stay awesome, and we'll talk soon.